Okay, Patrick, it's my favorite time talking charts. What do you got for us? All right. Well, listen, first of all, we're going to be using Coifin charts and uh, we're going to be looking at some of the cool stuff that uh, on Coifin's platform. And uh, really what I wanted to do, like, and, and in fact, I'm going to kind of give everyone a spoiler because in, in our top three, we're going to be talking about all these intermarket relationships and what's going on in the markets. But it's, um, uh, it's amazing how these different asset classes are all moving in the markets. And uh, I, first of all, we, it's worth noting some of the big currency moves we had, particularly the Japanese yen. Right. Um, do, do you know what uh, level we hit, uh, Kevin? <laughs> yes, I did lose the bet, folks, and I am going to have to wear the market. So just, so we have new listeners. We, oh, that's right. Uh, we, so we Patrick and I to... like to engage in occasional wagers. Sometimes we bet uh, burgers. Sometimes we bet steaks. In this case, we actually bet uh, the, the lose... single highest stake bet. That's right. Bet. This is basically the whole enchilada. This was the biggest bet that we had going, and I lost. It was that whoever lost this bet would have to wear the market huddle menswear, which is basically from a Sears catalog from 1975, and it's uh, shorts and uh, Lino, you know, just yeah. slap up the picture for yeah, us. Yeah, slap up the picture so we and can... so everyone can see. And uh, I'm gonna have to wear an outfit like that and go drinking with some people. Oh, it's gonna be so great, buddy! I'm so glad you uh, you lost. I know I lost. Badly. Oh, you know, you know. Actually, the winner should have been the privilege to wear, not the loser. <laughs> If you want to trade, but, I'm happy to trade anyway, with you, Patrick. But listen, uh, what I wanted to do is like look at this in a much bigger scale. Like I'm, I, I'm putting this here on a 10-year uh, chart. But the, what, what's fascinating to me is, is that if you go and look at the last like tw even 20 years, the yen has had extraordinary moves, higher and lower. The volatility has been pronounced, obviously, abonomics and all sorts of other issues on there. And really, the last three years has been defined in a pretty relative trade range compared to how volatile this yen has been. And, uh, and I'm asking an important question. Did we see the beginning of a breakout out of this range? Is this the start of something much bigger, or are you just going to fade this, Kev? Come on. Uh, I'm I setting am, this up I for am, another time. I am fading this. I think it's going to be a prairie dog. Oh, my God. And uh, uh, it, a noble animal. And I think it, for those who don't know, the, the, a prairie dog formation is when something pops its head up and then immediately goes back down. So I think the USD uh, JPY rally meaning yen weakness is short-lived and we will be heading higher in the coming weeks and months uh, i don't know if it's the beer but i, I just had this in little puke the in my mouth kind of kick in at the back <laughs> anyway uh well listen i won the bet that's all that matters on this but uh, but what what is interesting is is that we do have a strong dollar which is typically a very defense global defensive uh thing that's going on. But at the same time, we continue to see uh, material rally in bonds. I'm going to go to the long bond with the TLT ETF on the, the 20 plus year treasury. But what I want to really illustrate is, is that right across the board, we have interest rates declining considerably during this period where, um, where global growth scare is on because of the coronavirus, right? And uh, and a, another major defensive asset of gold has been kind of uh, uh, truggling along with that. Like, so I'm- Truggling. Uh, tr truggling. Tr truggling. Like truggling. That's a new word. Is it truggling? I just made up the word. Uh, it's good. I like it, it though. Let's, uh, for a, those who don't know, this is going to be the new thing. Truggling along. <laughs> truggling along. You, you heard it here first. Uh, and- um, and so what we're going to do is I just want to pull up uh, this chart on gold, which had a, a nice breakout to new highs. And so I ask you, Kev, like, I mean, if you're fading the dollar move, I mean, you're basically suggesting, I guess, that that the, this entire scare is going to fade. I mean, does that mean that you're fading bonds, you're fading gold, you're fading this whole risk off? So, Patrick, no, I'm not fading everything. It's not like I'm rushing out and uh, saying that the U.S. dollar is going to go straight down or that you know the gold is going to go back down as well. But I do think that the yen is probably the, the highest risk for a, a, a kind of fade, and that's why I'm focusing on that. And one of the things that I'd like to stress is that when the yen started to break out in terms of USD, JPY, and everyone got excited, that is typically associated with a risk-on move. 
and a lot of the algos and a lot of the kind of quantitative traders went out and bought stocks. And I warned that for the first time that that move was not getting caused because of, uh, let's just say, Japanese selling yen to buy U.S. assets. But it's actually people selling the yen because things are actually really bad there. And one of the things that I that I sh kind of focused on was the possibility that maybe that relationship was going to break and that we could see a situation where all the people that were rushing in or all the accounts that were rushing into buying risk assets because of the break in the USDJPY might be disappointed. And I wrote this long piece. And one of the things that was really interesting is that Rob from Coifin reached out and he said, although you've done all these you know, charts in Bloomberg, you can actually do those all on my system as well. And Patrick, I, I, I can't believe it. I, I watched his video when he sent it to me and I thought to myself, why am I paying all this money for my Bloomberg? And so what I would like to do is just kind of walk you guys through how you do that. And so what we do is we go and we pull up the G chart on uh, the USG, G, GP, USD GPY. And if you wanted to actually see the daily moves, what we do is we add a data series, or sorry, we add a data series and then we put rate of change in here and we click on there. And from there we go and we change it so that it's no longer 12 day and we change it to one day. And all of a sudden we get the same graph that I made on my Bloomberg. And you can see here the daily moves. And, and it, what's interesting is that we actually had the third biggest um, actually, it ended up being the second biggest because I think I wrote my piece before it was finished. The second biggest move over the last kind of year or so. Now, one of the things that I would like to stress is that Patrick was talking about how it's so narrow these days. And if we go look back 20 years and we do the same chart, you'll see that this little move that feels so big, it's, it's, it's actually it's nothing, right? Not a relative There's, base, there's yeah. lots of moves that are much higher. And so I thought this was really interesting and really powerful that you can do all this on Coifin. And so I highly suggest that, uh, you know, if you have any interest in, in kind of these sorts of analytics, go and have a look because you don't need the expense of Bloomberg to do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. But uh, but I disagree with your market analytics. But do, I do. do you, you, you like the Coifin <laughs> analytics, but you disagree with my market interpretation. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but with that said, uh, what I thought was really interesting is there's there's now a lot of people. So just to change the topic a little bit, there's a lot of people that are talking about the byproduct of lower yields, which was that there's been these huge rallies in obviously defensive. So I'm going to, let's say, look at the util space, which is the utility stocks obviously very interest rate sensitive because of their um, high uh, dividends. And you can see just like they're running like they're growth stocks, even though they're uh, uh, on the upside. It's, it's, it's nuts, Patrick. Go look at this. Like pull this up for the past couple of years. Let's yeah. zoom back even uh, farther. Uh, five years. And, and so we look and just look at January or December of 2018 uh, when we had that, that kind of scare. Yeah. And you'll see that the XLU was 50 bucks. Yeah, 45, 50, yeah. Yeah, so it's now gone and rallied almost 50% since then. That's unbelievable. It, and, they, it, and these companies aren't growing. They're just buying, yeah. they're, they're, they're just uh, racking up in their debt because they at lower and lower interest rates and, and leveraging it up and paying up their big well, dividends. What's, a, what's amazing to me is the fact that you have kind of bond proxies yeah. rallying in that amount. Oh yeah, and and it, uh, but it's not the only one. Let's say um, let's say you look at XLRE, which is the REITs, right? Uh, uh, the real estate investment trusts continuing to rip higher on the upside. Like the, right now, what's happening is all bo well, bonds are rallying, and therefore all bond proxies are rallying. And this is actually a, a feedback mechanism that is, and and this is a conversation me and you have all the time. Is is that long duration growth? Uh, so uh, growth assets are considered long duration, and therefore they are also net benefactors. And so all, all of these major growth companies in the technology space that have been um, doing these face ripping rallies are to one degree or another de derivative of this, right? Yes, they're they're also benefiting from the flattening of the yield curve and the fact that we have interest rates going down. Now, this how this works until it doesn't, Patrick. And oh, I, yeah. and I and that was the whole point of my yen piece is that I think that we're misinterpreting the data that is getting sent to us by the bond market. 
Right. And yeah. I'll agree with you. The, uh, the, uh, what, what I personally think is really interesting, um, uh, Marco Kolonovic put out a, a piece talking about um, the fact that he, he – I mean he made the call last year and was early – uh, that that basically one of the the generate like a, a once in a decade opportunities is rotating from uh, from this space into value momentum is that what he into said? value it's yeah. a once in a well he was wrong but he said that like uh, six months ago okay. and and he got hammered like so what, it's another once in a decade uh, yeah so opportunity because is what, that not what he's saying he's yeah saying? but right now what the, what the the fact is is that the coronavirus has now created a double down on this so like uh, just showing that from a factor analysis you literally continue to see what we have here on Coifin is showing uh, the the factor analysis comparing value to momentum, right? And uh, and so again, momentum continues to de- uh, clearly outperform, and value continues to lag. This 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 is uh, and this I think and, lag and is being cyclical. polite. Shit, the bed is shit the correct, bed. Is and, correct and, and more importantly, and it's it, more importantly, you have cyclicals and commodities all being hammered. And don't get your periodic table shit going here. <laughs> but uh, but but the uh, but the thing is is that at some juncture, what I believe that this coronavirus does is it creates this binary moment where once the everything subsides, uh, once the algos pick up that the the worst of it is over the rotation uh is going to be uh very violent oh i agree and i i actually wonder if it started today oh jesus yeah i know i know i know you don't you know hear I, that you, you're always early kev <laughs> uh, i don't doubt that and we'll leave all the jokes alone for that um, the, uh, but patrick i'm very proud of you saint marco's last name that's your eastern european background i can't say it oh my god yeah that's anyway so <laughs> The, po- the point, though, just getting back to the, to the charts, so we have defensives doing incredibly well, all bond proxies doing very well, and obviously uh, all the mag- MAGA stocks that are the, the big, the big uh, tech names are doing well. The big story will be when do we see the flip and when do we see the rotation, and that will hammer the index because the momentum stocks are just such a huge It weight. started today, Patrick. Oh, the MAGA good. stocks are for sale. Love you know it. what it was? I'll tell you what Love it was. It. It was the top will be the Economist uh, cover, which this week was basically uh, touting technology stocks. Really, it's gonna be the it's gonna once again be the cover indicator. I love it. I yeah. love it. I'm not, I'm not opposed to your idea. My 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 account won't object to your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to yours. Anyway, so so that that's that's what I wanted to cover. When does that rotation begin? I'm I'm excited to to see whether you'll be proven right or not. But uh, that is us talking charts for the day.